I believe AI is empowerment. Now, this is an arm that can see. It's 3D printed. It has a camera in the palm of its hand. Now, it's connected to the cloud. The magic is in the cloud. A service, a computer vision service in the cloud, can recognize the objects that the camera sees and generate the grip movements for the fingers so you can grasp the object. So let's take a look. As the arm is brought over the object like a key, you look, if you look at the right, you will see the computer vision service classifying the object, in this case, picking a pincer grip. And then with a flex of a muscle detected by a myoelectric sensor, you can trigger that arm movement and pick the key up. Unflex the muscle and you release it. And I look at the wine glass. This time it picked a palmer grip, folding all the fingers. Flex the muscle, grab it, pick it up, put it down, unflex the muscle, and you can let it go. You know, all it takes is a few cheap electronic components, a Raspberry Pi, an Arduino board, a servo motor, a myoelectric sensor. But of course, we all know the magic is a cloud AI service. That's the one that takes the image, understands it, and generates the behavior, the behavior that makes it grasp. And that's learned behavior. You trained it for that behavior, and therefore, it is adaptable. So let's see how the grip classification works. So the input to the Raspberry Pi comes from the camera and the myoelectric sensor. The images are sent to the Azure Custom Vision Service in the cloud. It's an API. It's an AutoML API, in fact, in that it can train and you can very easily feed it images and output classes, and it will learn to do the classification. So that hosts a deep learning model. When the image comes in, the classifier classifies into one of a few possible grips and outputs that to the Arduino board in the arm, which then triggers the servo motors to close the grip. The muscle flex is, is sensed by the myoelectric sensor, and that's the trigger. Now, you could as well have a speech trigger if you wanted. Now, the great thing about something like this, this architecture, is that it's adaptable. You set it up with the kind of movements and the behavior you want this arm to generate, right? And you can customize, a person using this prosthetic can customize it to the objects that you care about and the environments. You could even have a whole library of possible behaviors for this, which you could select from depending on the environment you are in. And even more, even more interestingly, you know, this was actually built by two undergraduates. This, uh, Hamayal Chaudhary from the University of Ontario Institute of Technology and Samin Khan from University of Toronto built this over a few weeks to take the first place at Microsoft's Imagine Cup 2018. So why is this revolutionary? Step back a second. There are over one million amputations per year. That's one every 30 seconds. WHO estimates that 30 to 100 million people live with limb loss worldwide. And only 5 to 15 percent of them have access to prosthesis. And even though Prostheses have been around since the Egyptian times, from that artificial toe on the Egyptian mummy to a, a knight's hand from the medieval times. Prostheses have been severely limited. They are limited by cost. The bionic arms that you can get today with sophisticated movements, they cost tens of thousands of dollars. They are limited by availability. Very few people can get them. It's not like you can order it online, get it in a package, and fit it on your body. It is limited by the interface, the interface to your body, and what, how constructively you can make the interface. Above all, it's limited by even our own nervous system, how we train ourselves to use these prosthetics. 
You know, with these prosthetics, you literally have to force your will into them to make them behave. And if you are sick, and if you don't have that same ability, well, then you can use that prosthetic very well either. So, think about this. How could we break these limits? How could we go beyond what we have accepted in the case of a prosthetic for 2,700 years, that we force our will into them and adapt to them? What if we could build them with cheap, readily available electronics? What if we could 3D print them so that it's available all over the world, anywhere? What if every one of them had a cloud AI service backing it up that gave it intelligent behavior that was adaptable, that was personalizable? And what if with the power of the cloud, you could transcend your senses and tap into the world's knowledge, and perhaps even tap into a community of people who could create new skills and new behaviors for your prosthetic device. And what if all of these came together at an incredibly affordable price? Like the $100 it costs to make that 3D printed smart arm that can see. The future of prosthetic devices. It is an amazing new transformation driven by cloud and AI. Imagine where all assistive devices are powered by such capabilities. Imagine a future where, given your goals and constraints, which you express, the actual behavior is generated by an AI service. And imagine that's available 24-7 without any sickness or tiredness or any of that. Imagine a future where all these devices really learn to work with you as opposed to you learning to work with them. So in the future, you're going to see affordable, intelligent, cloud-powered, personalized prosthetic devices. Never before in our lifetimes have we had so much potential. You have 3D printing, intelligent devices, and above all, the power of a cloud service with AI that can learn not just from you, but from the knowledge of the world. And against all of this, when we apply the ingenuity of humankind, we're going to build things we never imagined, like an arm that can see. And millions of people all around the world can get a new lease on life. Artificial intelligence is empowerment. Thank you.